Today we're going to take a quick look at the trimmer potentiometer, trim pot for short. This is a 10,000 ohm trim pot right there. We got one zero and then three more zeros after it for 10,000. Potentiometers are three terminal devices. You can see three wires right there and uh, trim pots usually have smaller terminals so that you can plug them into the breadboard. The wire ones are the easiest. So I'm going to slide them in there to line up with the three wires across there. You can see the arrows to the left. We could turn it the other way so the arrow would be to the right if we wanted to. Potentiometers are resistive components. They're based on resistance. That's what we're going to measure now. So when you measure resistance, you got to make sure there's no power being applied to the component that you're going to measure. Now, polarity doesn't matter. Either one could go to either of these two end right there. You, as I said before, it was a 10,000 ohm trim pot, but you can see it looks like it's fallen a little shy of that. They don't have to be exact. They can be a little bit higher or lower. That is to be expected. We're gonna take a bunch of measurements of changing value. So instead of holding the uh, probes the whole time to these points, I'm just gonna have these alligator clips that have jumpers crimped to them and I'm going to insert the uh, jumper to the board and we should get that same resistance right there. Maybe it would go up a little bit even because of the uh, extra connections we got. But there you can see we are at the two ends of a resistive element. So as I uh, wipe this, looks like as it warms up, maybe it's uh, going up just a tiny bit. But in any case, it's staying basically the same. That's a fixed resistance. If we take one of the jumpers though and go to the middle jumper there, so that is the wiper right there, and you're going to see probably about half of the resistance that we had, and it's bouncing around all over the place uh, for some reason right there. There we go, and uh, the jumper just wasn't uh, making a solid connection or something. So somewhere about halfway, and so this is the wiper and the uh, top jumper up there. We're going to turn it up. So now we close the gap between those two as far as the resistive element is concerned. There's a wiper going across the resistive element. So it's almost zero ohms right there. These uh, can get to zero ohms. Uh, looks like uh, not quite, but in case close enough to zero ohms, you got to be sure that you limit current uh, through them at uh, that point. And then we're going to turn the trim pot all the way the other way. And there you can see we have our full value right there. That's because now the wiper is basically connected to the other jumper that we measured before. All the current has to go through all of the resistive element there to get to the wiper. That's how that works. We can uh, shift these over again. There's no polarity, doesn't matter which one is connected to which, just as long as we get to the two points we want. And uh, it's bouncing around, probably not a good connection. And See if we can get that stopped. There you go. That's not too bad. So really close to zero there. And of course, if we turn it towards the uh, top there, now we have to go through all that resistive element to get from the wiper to the uh, other end there. But we got our full resistance in that direction. So now we're going to be measuring voltage. So I turned the meter off, but it'd be best to not have the meter connected at all when we apply power. The potentiometer or trim pot is usually used as a voltage divider. That's how we're going to wire it up now. So you can see I got those extra jumpers to the supply rails there. Power supply is set to 5 volts. I limited current to uh, 30 milliamps. I could lower that a lot more for uh, this video. But in any case, that makes sure that uh, we never put high current through this trim pot for uh, what it's uh, rated for. So in any case, we're going to plug it back in to uh, those same three rows again, but that gray comes all the way over to the negative power supply now and the orange goes all the way to the positive power supply now. And we grab the multimeter again. So this time we're going to measure voltage. I only have one setting for voltage other than I can change it from a DC to AC if I want to. But uh, in any case, I only got uh, one setting, one spot for the red probe. If you have a meter where you have to set it to a number, you set it to a number higher than the voltage you plan to measure. And we're going to put the negative ground there. And now it is important uh, which uh, jumper we put to which spot. So 
we're getting a good solid uh, voltage measurement there. That's the full supply uh, voltage. And again, it's probably bouncing around because these jumpers aren't making a perfectly solid connection. So that is the full supply voltage. We should get uh, pretty much the same other than the jumpers add a little bit of resistance or uh, whatever. Oops, I put them both to positive. There you go. And uh, there you can see we got the supply rail voltage. We're losing a little bit of voltage along the way due to resistance. So now we're going to take our voltage in relationship to ground. That's generally how electronic circuits work. You got uh, your ground, zero volts, and then a positive voltage in relationship to it. Not always, but uh, usually that's the, the way it is. So there you can see we got about half of the voltage. And uh, if we have a solid connection, it will stabilize. And then, okay, found my screwdriver. We can turn up the voltage by turning the trim pot more towards the positive supply right there. And there you can see we got the full supply voltage. Or we can go all the way down to no voltage. So now the uh, wiper is connected to the negative supply right there, as is our ground terminal. So there's no voltage difference. They're making the same uh, connection. Or we could go anywhere in between that we want. That's why this is such a useful component right there. We can take the full supply voltage or even a fraction of it if you have a, a range of voltages you want to do. You could do that too, but uh, usually it's the full supply voltage that you will see across the uh, resistive element and then the wiper taps into that so that you get some of the resistance on one side, some of the resistance on the other side, and you get a divided voltage out. This is a signal voltage though. The meter doesn't need any current, just a very small amount of currents going through the meter. It just looks at the voltage. If you have something that needs current, that current has to go through resistance. It's going to throw off uh, that voltage. So this is usually just part. It's a signal of a, a bigger uh, circuit that responds to that voltage. So always make sure you turn the meter off when you're done right there. And uh, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting in the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.